Welcome guys, this is another episode which is you Know Your Preacher. We be having preachers here and they've been nourishing us with the word of God and now it's another time good for us to know them. We know we need to know who they are, where did they come from, like you know better. You know, kujuam to Zaidi. Guys, don't forget, I'm your girl Suzy Sly. Don't forget to still go on our social media handles, which is on Instagram is Rafiki Prime underscore TV, on Facebook is Rafiki Prime TV, on YouTube is Rafiki Prime TV. Go there, share, comment, tell a friend to tell a friend, subscribe, ask any question. If you need to know who Evangelist William Kase is, ask any question, and I know he will, he's going to answer you, so you will have no doubt about him. Guys, let me introduce, hey, hey. I even don't know what to, to start with, hey, the shock of the day, he is Dr. William Kase, welcome. Thank you. Now, so many people have seen you preaching, but we don't know who you really we don't know where you come from like us we've been seeing you Pakistan, Malaysia you know with your international preacher but we need to know like where did you come from what are your names like I want to start with what are your names okay thank you my full names are William Kidia Kase uh, I come from Kitui I was born in Kitui Kenya Kitui County. There's a small village called Kamuti, Kitui County. <laughs> yeah, then Tungutu Village, I think so. Although I don't know about the names nowadays because of the new constitution, but uh, that is where I come from, Changuidia, but a place called Tungutu. That is where I come from, born in Kitui. Wow, guys, he's, he's a Kenyan. Mm. I'm a Sema Majinazak. He's a Kenyan, he's from Kitui. Mm. For those who don't know, that is Kambaland. Hey, now, man of God, how do you mind telling us about your early life before you had your calling in preaching? Wow, wow. In fact, I love so much sharing my testimony. When you see me walking, I'm a walking miracle. To me personally, I'm a walking miracle. Because, uh, as I've said, I was born in Kitui. Uh, in a family of nine, uh, my, my father is called Kase. My mother is called Sarah. They are all both late. My mother passed away last year, but one. But my father died when I was a small boy in 1974. That is when my father died. So we were brought up by our mother, Sarah, who went to be with the Lord last year, but 2019 in June. I remember very well, I had just come, up, come back from Malaysia. Then even before, even before I went to visit her, she passed away. I did not see her. But I saw her already when she has passed away. So, in fact, one thing, I want to thank God because of my mother. Immediately when I finished my high school, and I went to college here in Nairobi, in fact, my life was not good at all. I was drinking every day. I became an alcoholist. Every day, single day, I was drinking. And uh, my mother could not give up on me. She was praying all the time, going to churches, giving pastors the name of my name to pray for me. I was telling, you know that time, this, this is the time when the HIV AIDS, you understand, people were dying of HIV AIDS. So my mother was very much worried because of my life. So the pastors, I don't know them, but they were praying for me. By through them, the prayer request for my mother. Then one day, I got born again. Wow. And in fact, when my mother heard that I got born again, she was very happy. And let me tell you something good. In fact, when I got born again, I became serious with salvation. Very serious. I stayed for one full year going to church every single day. I did not miss church every single day. In the evening, I'm in the church. Yes. Days. I did not miss. Yes, God, I'm, God is my witness. I did not miss church even a single day. If you could find me preaching when I'm one year in salvation, you may think that I'm born again more than 20 years. 
Because I wanted to know Christ and I wanted to start the word of God. And during that one year, God gave me the gift of healing. I was also going to hospitals. I pray with people with the tumors. Tomorrow, doctor, they want to operate them. There are no tumors in their bodies. God wow. did great miracles. So that's when I, real, I realized, well, so whatever you hear me teaching of springs water, I know how it can change people. And through that now, God saved me. I become up. And then he, he chose me to be a preacher. And I'm preaching in the world, in the, in the nations of the world today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You said you were born again. Mm -hmm. And before you were born again, you are an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, when you knew that, when you entered into salvation, like, okay, it might be someone who told you, I want you to be born again. Like, or is it you who decided, I want to be born again? Or is it someone who came into your life and told you, I want you to be born again? In fact, when I tell people I got born again, everyone, even you, you can love here when I tell you I got born again. And I tell you. Love. Because that testimony is going to help somebody somewhere watching over me in the world today. Listen, this is how God said. There's a pastor, my friend. Very good friend from childhood. We were together in the same school. And I remember when we were in the same school. Uh, that time, I used to have lunch in their family. And the family loved me so much because I remember their mother. And my mother, they were working together in, in Kitui General Hospital. So this man is called Adam Skiboya. He's an apostle. He's a preacher. Maybe he's watching, over, watching me now. And the, in fact, he does not know this. Even if he's listening to me, he will hear this for the first time today. I did not tell him this. One day he visited me in my house in Dandora. I used to live in Dandora. That was back in 1993. He visited me in my house in Dandora. And then he came with a girl, very beautiful girl. And I remember the name of that girl was called Akinyi. She was a Luo, but very beautiful. But because of my character, my behavior, I loved drinking, all that. Wherever I could see a beautiful girl, I could follow that girl wherever she is. Okay? So I chose one day to follow this girl. And I don't know where she stays. I don't know where she lives. And she's born again. Then the only option was to go and look for Pastor Adams because he's the one who brought the girl to me, to, to my house. Then I went to look for Adams in his house in Dandora phase 2. And when I found, I, I, I found that, in fact, Adam was not there. But I, I found some pastors from Tanzania. They had a crusade. And this crusade, I think the man was preaching there was, is called Dunstan Maboya. By that time, they had a very big crusade in a place called Dandora. Dandora area too. So, I found those men there and then I asked them, where is Adam? They told me, Adam is not here, but you can sit down and wait for him. But my plan was not Adam. I was looking for Adam so that I can see, I see whether I can get a king because I used to get some money. So if I know I see a king myself, I know how to do. Okay. <laughs> now, these pastors whom I found there, now they asked me, are you born again? I told them, no, I'm not born again. And then they, I, one is called Olo. Olo is in Tanzania. He's a Lubate. He lives in Tanzania and he has churches in Tanzania. Then I told them, I am not born again. And then they began to preach to me. And instead of getting a kini, I got Jesus. As I wow, got born again. Wow, wow. Glory to God. I got born again from that day. And immediately after I got born again, I went to the crusade. Yes. And when I saw my boy preaching, I saw a different preacher. Because also he was in a t-shirt. I'm not in a t-shirt like him. No, no. I'm just giving an example. He was preaching in t-shirts, in jeans. And this man... That is where I saw miracles. I'm telling you. The first time for me to see miracles. That time, there was no, no, no thing, things of falling down. But this man could just breathe on a microphone. And people in the ground, they fall down. Then I saw the power. And, and then I admired, I, this kind of life is very good. That's why you see, I, was, I wanted to go to church every day. Because I admired to change completely. Because I tried to live drinking and I could not do it. But immediately I accepted Christ. Something came out of me. And I was changed completely. That's how I got born. Wow, you are after Akini, but you got Christ on the way. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was so, Aish, that is a big thing. Like, Aish, yeah. God never disappoints. <laughs> hey, maybe you, you're out there, you're like, I'm after this pastor. Ujui, you never know if you're, uh, you're looking for God. But I think 
Akinyi came to your life or you met a, you saw Akinyi it was the god's plan cuz maybe through Akinyi that is when you got saved i think it was god's plan no god i think he was using that plan can i ask give you a testimony seriously i used to drink almost every day and uh, if you ask the people whom we were drinking together when i get drunk i could join tell people let's see, let, let's all sit here and do you know what i was doing i was leading them to sing the songs of god telling them we were it's i'm drunk funny. but i'm the songs i did not even sing the other songs i was there's a song i loved so much you know when you are in our village i come from but my background is anglican church in fact i salute my uncle and my good friend at bishop zimbi of the the retired at bishop zimbi of anglican church he is my uncle in fact and he taught us about god when we were still young because i remember he had a scooter you know those scooters eh? I don't know whether you guys you are very young you have you don't know those kind of scooters whereby it has a space here you could put us all of us there then he takes us for meetings prayer groups he, he could teach us about god and i loved it, the way he used to do it and uh, i salute him he's a man i i respect so much at bishop zimbi so when uh, when uh, I, I i was drinking i could remember and sing the songs which used to sing in choir the song we, we should sing in choir there's a, a song i used to love so much then and this song was sing yesu asulu bichwa falme hau awa o yesu asulu bichwa falme hau awa waya hudi walimshika yesu kweli i used to sing those song and i'm drunk and I'm, sometimes I go sleep and I'm drunk but I dream preaching. So I think God called me. Before even you stopped drinking. Yeah. So the Bible says we were chosen even before the foundations of the world. So before the foundations of the world God, even do you remember the names, the, the words God said to Jeremiah before I formed you in your mother's womb, I chose you. And before you were born, no, before I formed you in the mother's womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I chose you. Yeah. I am chosen. Amen. Okay, tell us more about how did you start preaching? Did you like build a church here in Kenya and your, even your international preaching? Wow, wow. That's a good question. Uh, anyway, it's good to answer this question. For example, I have not pastoring in church in Nairobi now. But I began a church just here in Gedurai. Just, you know, the family bank is a building there. I had a church there. That was the, when I came to Gedra, that was the year 2004. I began a good church. The church was growing well. But amazingly, when I began the church, because I was traveling, going to, to Uganda, to Tanzania, preaching and coming back. When I began the church, I stopped going. Because I wanted now the church to grow. Can amaze, let me amaze you. We are called differently. That's why the Bible says God has called some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the body of Christ. Then the Lord spoke to me and told me, I did not call you for this. I called you for nations. So you have stopped doing what I called you to do. I was preaching in a place in Tanzania called Machame, whereby I remember the time the Lord sent me there in two, to the year 2000. The place and the area he sent me, there was only one... one uh, Pentecostal church. Only one. And it was there for 20 years with only 20 members. 20 years with only 20 members. So a year one member. I don't know how they were. And uh, most of these people who are, who are in that church, they were, because the area is of the, the place of very rich people. And most of the people, they don't live there. They live in the, the Salam. So the, most of the members of these churches were house helps who are work, coming from other places. They live in those houses. And they all used to join. But to point the locals there, Tori is really because of the religion. I don't want to mention the names of the legion. But they were, the, the legion was so strong whereby they could not allow people to go to Pentecostal churches. But God gave me the body and told me, I have brought you here for a purpose. Then I began to do crusades there. With my another, I have a dear brother called Isaac, Dr. Isaac Kalua. By that time, 
He told me, brother, I want to join you. We do this work. He could support me. We do crusades in Tanzania with our own expenses. I come with a team from Nairobi. We go to Tanzania. We do crusades, one week crusades, one week seminar. And guess what happened? We were there for two weeks and we left the church full. And since then, I'm telling you, we began to preach there. There are many, many Pentecostal churches today. That was Tanzania. And then uh, I began to move. From Tanzania, God opens doors for me. I went to South Africa in Durban. God did great things. From Durban, after two weeks, God sent me to Pakistan, 2008. And since then, I go to Pakistan twice every year. Wow, some of us have not <laughs> stepped in Pakistan. I'm through Pakistan now. God opened doors for me. <clears throat> for other nations like Nepal, Malaysia, India, USA. Like that, Nigeria. So, so by the grace of God. Hey, amen. Even us, God, remember us. We need to step our feet out of Kenya. <laughs> so, wow. I'm even, I, I'm out of words. Like, I feel it's a mm. testimony. You're, you're not even yeah. giving a testimony. You're a living testimony. Yes, I am. I am. And amazingly, I live by faith. Oh, I have many testimonies to give. Even the, the day God sent me to Pakistan. Can I tell you what happened? Tell us. God told me to go to Pakistan. That same day, I did not even have money. How did you go? But I booked the fl my flight by faith. Without money. I know God is the provider. He's the one who's sending me. So he, he provides. Whatever I give you a mission to do, he's a provider. He cannot assign, he can, cannot give you an assignment which he cannot provide for. People need to upgrade their faith. Yes. And then, uh, that time I remember is the year 2008, it has more, my, my son Jeremiah, who is now 12 years, I think it was months, I think some, uh, about two to three months old. And I had only 1,100 shillings in my pocket. And I'm going to Pakistan for one month. Then I woke up and I told my, my wife today I'm going to Pakistan. She asked me how. And you know that buy their ticket. I told her, don't worry, I'm going, I'm going to call you when I'm in the airport. In the plane, I'm going to call you. God has told me to go. He has a solution. And I left. I gave her 1,000 shillings to feed her and with a small baby for one month. Then I was left in 100 shillings going to Pakistan. <laughs> it sounds funny. It sounds like yeah. it's, it's because this is insane. I trusted in God who has sent me. And then uh, I took a train and I fed 50 bob up to town. Then uh, after feeding the 50 bob now, I remained the 50 bob in the city. No money to go to Pakistan. Then I received a phone call from a person in Pakistan. Are you still coming? Yeah, I told them tomorrow, 5 a.m. your time in the morning. Wait for me. I'm landing in Lahore Airport hey. via Katara Airways. And I have only 50 shillings in my pocket. And that time I'm talking like that, it is remaining only two hours for me to go and board the flight I have booked. Can you imagine that? But I had faith I am going. So as, after, after talking to them, my friend and my dear brother, I love so much, he called me in his office. He told me, brother, I was ready. You told me you want to go to Pakistan. I was ready to pay for your ticket. And, but I was waiting for, the, for some appointments, but he not get the money. So you must postpone your going to Pakistan today. You go another day. But I told him, brother, today I am going to Pakistan. The man looked at me. I told him, brother, don't worry. God is the provider. And as I was talking to him, immediately, the, man, the, the travel engine where I booked the flight, they called me. They told me, you are already late. Now it's remaining one and a half an hour for you to board the flight. And your ticket is here. You have not come for it. So come for your ticket. And I'm not going to be the, for a ticket. I have to go with the man to get the ticket. I told them, I am coming for the ticket. Before I finish talking to them, my brother here, my friend, is, he received a phone call. They told him, we have received some money in your account. See? So God what? Then he told me, you have to wait for me. I go because where you are going in Pakistan, 
you don't know where you are going and you need some pocket money at around for uh, you, you need something to do like uh, 100k for your pocket money i told him i cannot wait i have to go i'm late so what he did he wrote a, he wrote a check quickly he told me that i think the, their ticket was 100 something kenya shillings 100000 plus he wrote a check i went with the check i collected and he, I found, he looked for money in his pocket. He found only 500 shillings. So I did not have money for the taxi to the airport. How did you go there? Let me finish my testimony. Okay. Oh. Then uh, I went and uh, in fact, I came to learn later. These people, they don't, uh, they travel and they don't expect, accept, accept checks. Especially for the people they don't know. And this man was a Muslim. But the, the, the girl who took the check to him, he told the girl, give that, that pastor the ticket because already he is late. People, they have begun to check in. He's already late. Give him the ticket. We will settle the, the, the issue of the check later. Then I went to the bus stop in a bus under. You know the bus under? I just entered in a bus going to airport. And I told God, now, Father, I pray, no one who is going to alight on the way, is going to board this bus. Every person is going to board this bus, they are all going to, to, to the airport. Make sure everyone who boards this bus is going to the airport. Because already I'm late and I'm going for your work. Guess what? After people, within five minutes the bus was full. I think there are city buses, all this. And then the conductor is asked, is there anyone who is going through Jogorod? The people responded, no, nobody is going through Jogorod. They said, no. All of you are going to the airport. They said, yes, all of us are going to the airport. I said, God, thank you. And then I told God, now, no traffic jam. Make the roads clear. Command your angels to make the roads clear for me. I'm going for your work. And I'm telling you, within 15 minutes, we were in the airport. And I checked in, and I went to Pakistan. Amen. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I left my wife with only 1,000 shillings. I have a friend called Apostle Daniel Malay. He's a preacher. And my, we work together, in fact, in the same ministry. And this man, he, when he learned that I'm in Pakistan, he told me, give me the number of your wife. For number. I gave him the number of my wife. Guess what? He sent my wife enough money to use for the, for the whole month until I come. Chai, that is the name of God. that is the God we worship. That is yeah, the yeah, God yeah. we live in. Uh, oh my God, that is so. I even at this point I feel goosey all over. Like I can feel the spirit. You know when I sit with the man of God, I whatever is he, who is anointed, I feel it even me, guys. As we we are continuing so well, like you have had, like you need to upgrade your faith, like. If, you, if your faith is another level, I'm not saying up or downward, you need to upgrade it. Like he went out of the house knowing that he was going to Pakistan and he had nothing, but he trusted in him because he knew that God is the provider. I know even me, my faith, I, I just up a bad, but I trust in him and I'm going to work on my faith. Like we are told like a small particle like a small particle can work miraculously and that's what i see in you like it worked wow guys we want can i tell you something god is faithful Amen. understand you don't need to help god anywhere and i travel in the world today and i have never raised money for missions yes god is my witness i have never raised money to go for missions abroad I have never. Wherever God sends me somewhere, I trust in him. And when I trust in him, then he touches people. There are people who have been sending me money and I have never met them. Until one day, I remember I asked one brother from USA, why do you send me money and you don't know me? And you have never seen me. He told me, I don't need to know you. I, never, I don't need to see you. Why? I can see you in Nepal. That work you are doing, I'm supporting that. That work you are doing in Nepal, countries well, by not more many people wants to go there. Because if you are a preacher and you love money, you cannot go to those countries. I went to Pakistan five times, coming back, 
And almost all the time I come back, you find, sometimes I find padlock in my door. I have come from abroad and the landlord cannot believe that I have come with a plane. By a plane. And I cannot afford a rent of, of 4,500. Because they don't know I operate by faith. When I take just a, take a step of faith and go, money begins to follow me. God is faithful. When God gives you an assignment, that's why personally, personally, and listen to me. This is going to help somebody. God who has called you is so faithful. Very faithful. If God gives you an assignment to do, wherever there is a vision, there is provision. God is so faithful. And that is why, because we don't want to trust in God to provide for his work, we begin even to manipulate people. And I have seen a lot of manipulation in giving in the name of this and then this. But if God gives you an assignment to do it, he will provide for it. He is faithful. What he wants to, to us to trust in him is able. Wow, wow. Okay, tell us. There's someone there who is living a sinful life. Because you, you lived a sinful life before you got into salvation. Like what is your advice to that person who is living a sinful life? But he got this in mind that one day I will accept God in my life. But sins are still hindering him. Wow. In fact, let me tell you something. That is my heart. I remember one day God spoke to me. And God told me, if you want to succeed in your ministry, see things the way I see them. I see things the way he sees. I asked him, how do you see things? Then in fact, he brought me to the Samaritan woman. Then he took me to Zacchaeus. Then he, he took me to the sinful woman who went to cry the feet of Jesus, knowing the feet of Jesus. Other people, they could see them sinners, but Jesus came to save them. So wherever I see a sinful person, I have that art to tell them about Christ. Christ who changed me can change them and they become better people. Even them, I'm telling you no one, even my friends today, even people in our village, they, most of them, they don't believe whether this drunkard is the one who's flying all the time, going out of the country to preach. Those who know me from, my, from where I come from, those my friends, they could not believe I can be the kind of person. So if you are there and you are watching me and you are a sinner, you are a drunkard, you are a prostitute. Even one day I went to preach, I remember I preached with some prostitutes at night in Koinange Street. And they were almost naked, but I preached to them because God told me, see peep them like me. I saw the blood of Jesus washing this prostitute in Koinange. Changing them to become better people. That's why you see, I preach to all people, no matter their, their religion, no matter where they, their culture, I preach to them because I know Jesus loves everyone. In fact, Jesus, he hates only sin, but he does not hate sinners. He loves us because the Bible says this is how he demonstrated, he, he demo, demo, demonstrated his love unto us. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. And he knows a sinner cannot remove their sin. They cannot forgive themselves. So unless they accept Jesus as a preacher now, and Jesus enters them, he changes them. So the only way they can do it for them to change is to accept Jesus Christ to be their personal savior. And they allow the springs of water to flow in them. You'll be changed people. Yeah. And what is the, okay, I want you to leave people with the word of, of the day. Like your word of the day, anything like encouragement, Bible verse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's that Bible verse which blesses you each and every time and you need like, this is the word of this day. Okay, what I love so much is about Jesus. When, when one of the disciples asked him, show us the way to the Father. Jesus said what? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one can go to my father except by me. And this is God himself speaking. This is Jesus speaking. So my brother, brothers and my sister, wherever you are, wherever you are watching me, Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. I know you are suffering today. For your sufferings to be over now, because of sin, accept Jesus to be a personal savior. And when you are suffering, when you have Jesus, he will make you overcome the challenges. Because he came to the world and he overcame the world. He conquered the world. So Jesus said, because I overcame, you shall also overcome. So believe in him. 
Wow, guys, we have come to the end of Know Your Pastor. I believe that his temple, his his testimonies has touched you in one or another. If you are, you are living a sinful life, I know God ha will, has spoken to you through him. Guys, till next time, don't forget to go to our social media handles, which is on Instagram, is Rafiki Prime underscore TV. On Facebook, is Rafiki Prime TV. And on YouTube, is Rafiki Prime TV. Go there, rewatch, rewatch, rewatch. Know this man, know your pastor, know your preacher, know your evangelist. Like, ask him any question. If you didn't ask, he will still answer you online. Like, guys, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. This is the only way you will know who is your preacher. Guys, till next time. Bye. Bye-bye.